Now I would like to present a study in double negatives. What I have in front of me is the result of that decouple exercise from earlier, where we began with these functions all even, all positive, any even, any positive, and we discovered that there was a bit too much duplication, and so we untangled them, we decoupled them to a series of simple condition functions, is even, is positive, is zero. I've left them as regular functions and not lambda expressions for the sake of this example. And these two functions, any of and all of. And I haven't changed much. I've condensed them a little bit and I guess put them in a different order. What I would like to do in this video is reduce this almost to the point of absurdity. We've already decoupled them. We've come up with a pretty clean decomposition. But I want to do another one of those exercises where I avoid the use of loops. So here the prompt is rewrite the all of function to use no loops. Instead, call any of. I want to somehow turn the all of function into a special case of any of. Now this exercise is a bit of an acquired taste. The reason I have it where I do in the sequence is I think it's really neat to use this opportunity to show what I can really do with lambda functions that allow me to manipulate, like not just to write functions wherever I want, which is we've already seen we can do that. I can make functions out of other functions using lambda expressions. So how can I visualize all of as a special case of any of? Suppose I ask the question, is every element, is it true that all of this vector is even? So every element is even. Well, no, there's an odd element. Or maybe there's an element that is not even. There's an element where the condition doesn't hold. In, in other words, if any of the elements have the property that the condition does not hold, here's the double negative, if any of the elements have the condition where, where have the property where the condition does not hold, then it is not true that all of the elements have the condition hold. Ugh, there's a lot going on there. Let's see, if we can re let's see if we can write ourselves a comment in terms of that one condition is even. So um, how to decide if all elements are even. Check if every element, uh, check if any element is odd. If so, then all elements are not even return false, because we're, we're writing the all of function. If not, then no element is odd, so every element is even, return true. So there is a bit of a double negative. First, I have to come up with the opposite condition. You give me is even, I come up with the opposite. In this case, that would be is odd. But in general, I can figure that out. Here's a condition function, it returns bool. If your condition returns true, the opposite condition returns false. If your condition returns false, the opposite condition returns true. So I check if any element is odd, the opposite of the provided condition. Okay, that's the first negative. So first I come up with the opposite condition. If it's true that any element meets the criteria for the opposite condition, so if that's true, if any of returns true, then I return false. If any of returns false, then I return true. Still pretty nasty. The exercise is still an acquired taste, but I think we can do it. The first thing is I need the opposite condition. I don't want to just work with even and odd. I want to make the opposite condition to whatever you gave me. Well, how do I make a condition? Well, I guess I could write a lambda expression, so I call it opposite condition. Condition. All right. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to um, I'm going to cheat a little bit and sort of undo everything for a second. I just want to run the code as it was already written because I want to make sure that we can see the correct output. Okay, so I'll run the code that I just compiled, decouple three. There it is. Okay, so uh, v0, which is the vector, we'll just go check quickly. v0, the vector of all zeros, is all even. It's not all positive. It is all zero. It does have at least one even element, because it has zero in it. It's, it doesn't have any positive elements. It does have at least one zero element, uh, and so on. You could pause the video and verify the rest, but I claim that they are correct. Uh, okay, so I want to generate the opposite condition in the all of function to the condition that you gave me. So the opposite condition would be, well, let's see. So you give me an element x. I'm writing a condition function. It takes one element of the vector. And I want to ask the question, does your condition return true or false? If your condition returns true, I'm going to be as contrary as possible. If your condition is true, my condition is false. Otherwise, my condition is true. If your condition returns false, mine returns true. I just returned the opposite of your condition. And yes, I know if you're a smart ass, there is a, there is a way of doing this in one line. It's great. I love it. But for the sake of clarity, I feel like the if statement makes a little bit more sense. So I have just made the opposite condition. But is it going to work? So have I made sure to capture every variable that I use? Well, I can always ask the compiler to help me. Let's see what happens if I try and compile this. And it doesn't work. It says, sorry, condition is not captured. 
Well, that's right. Condition is just a variable. It's one of the arguments to the all of function. It's something that's a variable in the outside scope. That means if I need to use it in my condition, I have to capture it. So I'm going to capture it by value because I'm not modifying it inside the lambda expression. Um, I should also add for other reasons that are not germane to this video, if ever you are making a lambda expression that captures another function, you should capture it by value. You should not capture it by reference. There are other reasons for that. A future video will include a case where capture functions by reference would make a bit of a mess. So in general, because you're never modifying functions inside a lambda expression, or unless you are, you should capture it by value, just like anything else. Capture it by value if you can. Okay, so I've got the opposite condition function. Now what I'm going to do is call any of. I'll call this the any result. I'm going to call any of. I'm going to give it my vector, and I'm going to give it my condition function. There we go. And so it says here, okay, so I check the opposite condition. If the answer is yes, that is to say, if any of found one element where the opposite condition holds, whoops, I should pass in opposite condition. If any of found one element where the opposite condition holds, that means it is not the case that the uh, original condition holds on every element. So if any of returned true, there is at least one element where the opposite condition holds. So it is not the case that the original condition holds on every element. OK, so if any result is equal to true, that means that the opposite condition holds on one element or more, which means it's not true that the original condition holds on all elements. So that means any all of has to return, we're writing the all of function, it has to return false. Otherwise, if any of returns false, there is no element where the opposite condition holds. That means that the original condition must hold on every element. So I put else. And then I return true. All right, we'll see what happens if we compile that. And it works. And we try running it. And I can leave it to you to, well, I guess we can scroll up quickly. Um, I can leave it to you to pause the video and verify this is, in fact, the same output. This is, I think, absurd reduction. Obviously, this is way easier if I wrote it with loops. I just wanted to prove that I can do a lot of manipulation with this ability to write lambda expressions. I can take one function and make myself a brand new function. And two videos from now, we'll see that in a much more constructive way, an occasion where we're working with lots of functions. And we want to combine conditions. We want to almost form algebra on functions, where we can write functions that take functions and return functions. And unlike this, a bit of an absurd double negative case, uh, the example we'll see in two videos is, I think, very constructive. In the meantime, we have to revisit the example from the beginning of the week of pairing up elements of lists.